Welcome back to Talk the Walk with me, Sarah Wong. I'm with Alan Zeman, chairman of the Lan Kui Fong Group. Thank you very much, Alan, for coming on the show. Good to be here, Sarah. Now in, yeah, in part one, you talked at length about um, China's uh, how how is how important it is for Hong Kong to reopen the border with China, and, and we understand that we understand the necessity. But we also know that one of the very important premises for that to happen is for Hong Kong to get the COVID situation stabilized, to get it under control. And looking back to Hong Kong, looking at what we're dealing with right now, these, these new clusters um, in the Bar District in Lan Kui Fong and near Lan Kui Fong. Um, and I also heard your grievances and some of the disagreements that you might have with some of the health authorities when, when it comes to who and what is to blame for causing this to happen. And one person who shared your grievances is a uh, catering lawmaker, uh, catering sector lawmaker, Tommy Chang. He was here a couple weeks ago on this very same program talking about how, you know, the catering industry has always been penalized, in his word, by ambiguous and ever-changing rules. Now, I heard some industry leaders in the bar so and the bar association are asking the government for clarification of rules and regulations inside the bars what or what should not happen etc do you think that could solve the problem or do you think you know that could make a difference i think i think the key of course uh, because uh, there was some you know some newspapers had written some media had written about uh, uh, djs appearing in uh, two of the clubs, he, and 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 uh, they had videos of it, and of course it went public by CHP, uh, you know, and 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 uh, saying that DJs, well, that was a gray area that no one wasn't re really brought up before, you know, uh, live music they know cannot be uh, played, but uh, a DJ just mm. playing background music or not really interacting with the crowd, and today it was clarified that if, if a, a DJ is fine. Uh, as long as and playing background music is fine, as long as they're not interacting with the crowd, asking the crowd to, uh, you know, for dancing or play a certain song or sending messages to, uh, to a person. And so, and so, uh, but I, I think it's important that the police themselves also know because it's so kind of ambiguous that uh, police will be checking, and so that they know that uh, background music is is, you know, is allowed. And uh, live music is still not allowed. That was supposed mm. to be allowed after June, after June, and probably be into July now. Uh, so I think I think that in general, what Tommy said is yes. The first place that gets uh, always attacked are the uh, bars and restaurants and 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 clubs. But uh, you know, and it's frustrating for many people. Many bar owners have been closed since January. You know, it's right. difficult to stay in business that that long. So uh, they also have families. The good thing is I think every bar that I know and every club owner that I know, everyone is doing the rapid test for all their staff every single day, making sure mm. that all their staff are safe. And and uh, so that's something that's very important. And as I say, the vaccination now, uh, it's almost foolproof with the three vaccinations. Anyone in your premise will now be vaccinated three times. And so that's also really, really uh these are all safety standards that I think, you know, will, will help you. There's no mm -hmm. reason, that, to me, there's no reason that being on the MTR and you know how crowded or being in an MTR station, you know how crowded they are versus being in a club or a bar, you know, or a restaurant. Uh, it's similar. Some people will get infected and some people won't. And of course, you will have clusters, but uh, they just disappear. Most of the People, from what I've heard, most of the people that have been affected are very, very mild. <laughs> Normally, <laughs> it's not a problem. Right. So what have you seen after the launch of the latest vaccine pass scheme in your business district in Lan Kui Fong? And how have these recent cases, you know, um, have an impact on that? You know, the safety precautions, everything. How has that impacted businesses? I mean, in, in, in essence, uh, you know, when it first happened, everybody was very conscious of, uh, you know, this cluster that broke out and, and I kept getting calls. I'm not a bar owner myself. I'm a landlord, basically. And I kept call, getting calls from a lot of tenants, a lot of different people in the business, uh, and, you know, to find out what's going on because they're very worried about their business since 
they've been closed since January. But uh, yeah. I've said to them that uh, basically now with the vaccination, I love the government for that, for having triple vaccination. Uh, you know, and some people, yes, yeah, some owners complained about that, that it's going to hurt their business. Yes, it will, but it's the right thing to do. I think that uh, getting Hong Kong vaccinated, then we can move on with it for the, for the long term. So uh, business for many, you know, is, is uh, of course down, but in general, I've seen, I like Hong Kong actually has been very busy. Uh, I think young people just are, people are now immune to it. They live with it, they're living with it. And, and so I think that uh, as long as, it, as there's no, the death rate is low, we can see even the numbers have been around 200, uh, 250 and the, the mm. crazy thing is the numbers they that the government always gives includes maybe import maybe 35 imported and 300 uh uh you know together right. they come up with you know but in, in in essence uh so if you take away the imported cases um you know the numbers are in the 200s and or in 100 to 200 and I think, uh, you know, it'll steady, be steady for there, there for a while, and then eventually probably start to come down again. As most doctors have said now, uh, including the CHP, that uh, they, they're not worried about these so-called clusters because uh, it's going to be normal. All right, not worried as they may be, but Chief Executive Carol Lam have said the pace of further relaxation will be slowed down because of this. And I know that these couple of months has been extraordinarily hard for bar and restaurants owners. And I wonder how would you respond if the government, for example, decides to suspend the knife life sector again if the situation deteriorates? Will you continue to offer um, rent conceptions, for example, and how long can you keep that up? Yeah, obviously, if uh, this happens, which I don't really think it will happen, and I know why everybody is so concerned, and the chief executive, Carrie Lam, has said things, because July 1st is the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to China, a very important day. We might have a very important uh, guest coming to Hong Kong as well. So I think everybody wants to make sure that everything is fine and that the numbers are low because the numbers are high then potentially that guest will not come to Hong Kong and so I think that uh, it's a big thing about then we will have the start of a new administration the chief executive the new chief executive John Lee will take over his term and so uh, I, what I would do is hopefully it will I really do believe that it will not get out of, get out of hand and I also want to make sure that numbers are low, so especially uh, for the 25th anniversary, so we have very good 25th anniversary. I think it's very important for Hong Kong and Hong Kong people. And so I think that, uh, uh, you know, if it's some uh, fluke that it does happen uh, and they do have to close down, which I hope not, because you're affecting a lot of lives, a lot of uh, people working, you know, in these places and, and they have families and children and you know I, that's what I worry most about is the families and, and, mm. and these these staff that are working in all these uh, bars and, and uh, premises and so I think that uh, basically uh, they've been through a very difficult period this year and I think that uh, if I need to give more concessions unfortunately I will have to there's no choice uh, and along, hope, hopefully, the government would give concessions as well. But hopefully, we're past that uh, stage. And I, I really think, as I say, we've got to join the rest of the world and see how the rest of the world is now treating all this. And we're no different. It's the same virus that's all over the world, that's been all over the world. And we just have to learn that this is exactly <laughs> the same virus. Yeah, last question here. I know that um, from your previous interviews with our station as well and with other publications, I know that you don't always agree with the current administration's handling of the of some of the um, um, situation here. And I wonder, uh, you mentioned that you have high hope for incoming Chief Executive John Lee and you are confident that he will strike a you know, reasonable balance while taking the fight against COVID forward. What's your message for Mr. John Lee? John has already said that with this COVID, of course, he wants to talk to China and find a way to, uh, you know, to creatively 
open up the border with China and also open up the international borders. And he wants to balance between business and health. And that's something that's really, really important. Otherwise, Hong Kong will fall behind, way, way behind uh, the mm. rest of the world. With that kind of confidence that a central government has given Mr. John Lee, what do you hope for him to achieve in terms of handling COVID first and foremost after he comes to office? Quickly. Well, I hope that he he's able to uh, really open the borders. I think that's really important. I think I think hopefully uh, the other thing I know beyond health is the housing situation, which is a huge problem in Hong Kong. He's already said that'll be a priority for him at development and and. and getting a house for everyone, getting people out of subdivided flats and getting people out of uh, these small uh, cubicle homes, you know, and, and so nano flats. And so I think that's really, really important. Giving people a better life, that's what he wants to do. He comes from a housing estate himself when he was a young man. He understands the problems that people have. Let's, I believe he will be the one to be able to solve the problems. Health being one of them, of course. All right, well. Sir, that's all the time we have today. Thank you very much for coming on Talk the Walk. Alan Zeman, Chairman of Lan Kwai Vong Group, thank you for coming on Talk the Walk. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Stay safe. You too, and take care. I will.